Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'll be benchmarking my newest graphics card which is ASUS GTX 660 Ti Overclocked Edition. You can see the configuration details, the PC configuration details down below in the description. And you can see the unboxing of the graphics card and installation of the graphics card into the case in the previous videos as well. So here I have two cameras running, one is filming us just doing the benchmarks and another one right here um, so that shows us the current wattage, wattage sorry. and if I set it to this that would be maximum wattage okay so I'm going to start the PC now um, let's see, oh sorry I have to power it on first I suppose done okay so that's the peak wattage there 37 watt just to probably power up the caps and everything and I'll see you in Windows for the power draw okay guys and we're back so current power draw is about 80 sometimes 70 watt now this is my just uh, basically setup I have GPU tweak from ASUS running so that would show me what the, what are the temperatures and the usage of the GPU and here I have Fan Expert 2 running as well that shows me the CPU and the motherboard temperature. Now the CPU temperature at the moment is 33, motherboard is 30. Now this is normal because I was working with PC a bit just to make some videos and I'm only using Intel stock cooler so I don't expect any you know amazing results there. The temperatures could go as, as high as 50 or 55 degrees in these tests, which is normal because that cooler is not sufficient enough for proper cooling. But anyway, that's all I have at the moment. So the test we're going to do is six games, sorry, five games, um, three 3D Marks um, versions, and we're going to do Cinebench and what's that? Unigen Heaven. For the games, it's going to be Diablo 3, Spec Ops The Line, Saints Row, Batman Arkham City, and Dark Showdown. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Now, the all the settings on this PC it, are basically as I received. So, GPU is not tweaked, overclocked, or whatever. CPU is the same, RAM is the same. Everything is started the way it was installed in PC. So, let's get going. Okay, so I'm going to set this function there to maximum wattage. And we're going to start with 3D Mark 06. Settings are just standard because it's not a version that I've purchased. So whatever are the standard settings, that's how I'm going to run it. Which is I think 720p performance preset. I'm going to see that in a sec. And I'm going to skip all the benchmark routine. I'm just going to go uh, straight to the results. So I'm just waiting now for the actual configuration to appear. And there we have it, so let's see, yep, uh, what, sorry, 1280 by 1024, and yeah, standard settings, I can't change any of these guys because I haven't purchased the product, so we're going to just go with the standard benchmarks, and I'm going to run 3D Mark now, and I'll see you at the results. Okay guys, and we're nearly done, so as you see, at least for this particular test, power consumption went only to 220 watt, now this is for the whole system. Now mind you, this is not a very accurate uh, method to measure it, but I'd say within 10% margin it's, it's correct, so that's not too bad. Um, okay, so 3D Mark score, I keep having this issue where the web page is not refreshing properly in Chrome. Now that happens on any PC that I'm using, guys if you have a solution for it, I'd be delighted if you could post it in the comment section down below. So the score is 27,810 3D marks, SM2 score is 10,768, HDR score which is SM3, 14,089, CPU score 6,975. So not too bad. Next we're gonna run another 3D mark in series, never mind that, which is 3D mark Vantage.
And for this benchmark as well, same thing, presets, I can't select anything, it just says performance, run benchmark, and I'll see you at the end of it. Okay, and the benchmark is finished. Now before the results open, I must say this is the ugliest 3D mark to date, 3D mark vantage. At least in my opinion, let me know if you think differently and why, why do you like it. Be interested to find out. Uh, so the score is 26,497 3D marks, graphic score of 29,232, CPU score of 20,691. It says graphics card not recognized for some reason. I think I'm using better drivers. Actually, guys, you might be interested in what driver I'm using. So currently I'm using NVIDIA 30602, 306.02 driver. And it's obviously 2nd of uh, September, just in case. And next we're going to run 3D Mark 11. By the way, the power usage didn't go that much up. It's only 224, so 4 watt higher than we had before. So not a big deal. Benchmark test only, performance P, run 3D Mark. As I said, it could be 10%. Um, fluctuation there just because of the power testing method that I'm using. So I'll see you at the end of the benchmark. So it seems like this GPU absolutely eats through all the tests and it doesn't have any issues with any of the 3D Mark tests at the moment. Anyway, there's a new 3D Mark coming so maybe that will be some sort of a challenge for it. But for now the FPS is quite good and actually just giving the results for a second, 58 degrees, so as you see the temperature, I don't know guys if you can properly see it, but the temperature goes to kind of 60 degrees um, usually, maximum I had a 71 degrees Celsius, so that's not too bad, considering I only have Intel cooler and the CPU goes to at the moment 40, but I'd say it was around 50 degrees during the test, oops. Okay, so back to results anyway, and we're going to talk about all of this in conclusion. So the score is 8,073 D marks, graphics 8,345, physics 7,587, combined score 7,012, and the wattage is still 234 watts. So that finishes our 3D mark. Next, I'm going to do the Cinebench and OpenGL only. The CPU has been done before so I'm gonna skip that. Okay and the result is 55 frames per second, 55.11 frames per second. Um, configuration is the usual, I, I didn't change any settings again. Um, Unigine Heaven, Unigine Heaven or whatever you call it. So DirectX 11, Tessellation Normal, Shaders High, Anisotrophy 4X, Stereo 3D Disabled, with monitor not on, Anti-Aliasing, let's do 4X, Full Screen, yes, Resolution 1080p, if I can find it, there we go, 1080p, and run, and there's the result guys. So the FPS is 59.2, score is 1491, minimum FPS is 12.6, maximum is 144.3. Um, that's pretty much it, settings there you probably guys can see it, whether it's 1920 on 1080, 4XAA, shaders high, textures high, filter through linear, anisotropy 4X, everything enabled, tessellation normal. <clears throat> I'm going to close that and quit the benchmark. Okay, so that's pretty much it for basic benchmarks. Let's see if anybody has, else has a benchmark. I don't think so. So we're going to go with games next. Okay guys, so before I start the game benchmarks, um, this is my Fraps log. I'm going to see the results here. After everything is finished, um, actually I'm just going to increase the font so you could see it as well. 
And for now, I'm just going to start. Actually, Fraps has already started because I was trying it before. And I'm going to go with Diablo 3 and I'll see you in the game. So the options are as follows. The video is full screen 1080p, vertical sync, letterbox off. Maximum foreground FPS just the standard which is 150, maximum background FPS 8, texture, shadow, quality high, high, physics high, color density high, anti-aliasing on. And that's it. I'll see you in a game. So I'm gonna start benchmarking from here all the way to the village. I'm gonna fight a few undead there at the village gate. The gate will be open. I'm gonna go into village into one of the huts to speak to Leah. I'm gonna have a quick chat with her and then kill all the undead in the room, the usual stuff. And then the benchmark will be done there. I wouldn't go into more details there with benchmarks. So let's see how we go. Okay, and the benchmark is finished. So I'm gonna exit the game and show you the results. So we have average of 99.18 FPS, minimum 82, maximum 102. So not too bad on overall. Now maximum wattage meter I have reset already. So the maximum wattage over Diablo 3 was 207.8 watt. Okay, next game is Spec Ops The Line. So we'll see you in the game. Okay, and we are in the game, so the options are as follows, graphics 1080p, texture and shadow detail very high, full screen yes, vsync off again, ambient occlusion on, occlusion on, and that's it. So the benchmark will start literally from the moment I'm gonna hit select button and it will finish just before the helicopter crashes uh, during sandstorm, so I'll see you after. Okay, and we're done here as well. So the log shows there that we had average of 54.16 FPS, minimum 0, maximum 80. Okay, so that's it for that. Now, by the way, just back to the benchmark result, I've tried to shoot the windows, all the objects that I could destroy and things like that. So I tried to stress the GPU as much as possible and still Average was 54. Now, minimum zero, I think there was a, like a cutscene ending. So during that, um, just between the scenes, it could have dropped to zero because it's kind of, I think that that's the way the game is done anyway. Okay, next is Batman Arkham City. So for settings, we have full screen. Yes, obviously the resolution 1080p, VSync no, anti-aliasing is FXAA high. Uh, 3D vision disabled obviously because I don't have a 3D vision capable display or glasses for that matter. DirectX 11 features MVSS and HBAO, DirectX 11 tessellation normal, detail level very high, everything else is set to yes, click OK, play, I'll see you in the game. By the way guys, it seems like uh, Spec Ops uh, managed to get 220 watts of the power draw. Um, by 220 watts, I obviously mean the whole system. So now I'm gonna go with Arkham City, see if it can beat that. Uh, benchmark, basically I'll start it from the moment Batman starts talking to Alfred, or whoever is he talking to, until I fly over straight to the cathedral, beat all the thugs, and uh, just before I enter the cathedral, I'm gonna turn the benchmark off. So I'll see at the results. Frost performance, average 59 FPS, 59.5, minimum 38, maximum 64, so not bad. The power meter, as you can see, shows 231 watts, so climbed a bit higher than before. Um, next, I'm going to go with the George Showdown, so once again, I'll see you in the game. Okay, and we're in the game, so resolution is 1080p. Boulder sampling 4x, MSAA, full screen yes, refresh rate 60, VSync up, aspect radio, da 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 da, everything, okay, shadows ultra, pulse process high, night lighting high, vehicle reflections ultra, ambient occlusion ultra, water high, objects ultra, trees ultra, crowd ultra, ground cover high, particles high, distant vehicles high, skid marks on, and cloth high. Okay, so basically I'm going to finish the race, I'm going to try not to engage in too much action there with the other vehicles, basically just go as fast as I can, couple maybe crashes, 
and finish the benchmark then and show you the results. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, and I'm done. So let's see the props. So we have 72.78 average FPS, minimum 61, maximum 99, so not bad at all again. Okay, we have 4 out of 5 benchmarks, Saints Row the Thors. Now with this game what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start the new game, DirectX 10 11 by the way. I'm going to start the new game and... I'm going to cut all the sequences and things like that, but I'm going to play from the very start all the way until the helicopter crashes and I'm going to show you the result. By the way, the last game scored 237 wattage, maximum wattage. We'll see if this game can increase that a bit. So display, before it starts, 1080p, full screen yes, preset ultra, v-sync off, okay, back back and campaign new game okay and I'll do a benchmark now I'll show you the results okay so the benchmark is done now let's see average FPS 60.98 minimum 26 maximum 82 now guys there were maybe three or four cut scenes so I'm not sure how the FPS worked out during these I'm, I've tried to cut them as soon as possible so hopefully that didn't affect the whole thing too much. Okay, so overall as you see it's 54 minimum to the 99 um, maximum average FPS. Okay, I'm gonna now sum it up all in a second. Okay guys, so the conclusion. No, I don't even know where to begin. First things first, this graphics card goes through all the things that you might want it to go through all the benchmarks, all the games, everything should be able to run at 1080p on the high settings. The most amazing thing I suppose is that not only it's capable of doing that, so it's basically running as fast as GTX 580 of the last generation or faster even, but also the whole system. Now I have two hard drives in a RAID 1 mode I have an SSD, I have this graphics card and 3570k CPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM and all this thing basically manages to squeeze in within 250 watt which means that if I had 300, 350 watt PSU, uh, which is a power supply, of a good quality I would be able to actually run the system is pretty amazing guys I mean with the GTX 580 you would need at least 100 extra watts to do a similar thing and if you overclock you might be asking for extra 150 watt for the same performance effectively so from that perspective it's great it also runs quieter because it needs less cooling to you know dissipate all this heat that it generates um, what else I've tried with Adobe, by the way, Suite as well, so it seems like it runs pretty fast. It's much faster than GTX 560 Ti that I've tried before, so I'd say it's worth investing. Basically, guys, if you are looking for the new GPU and you're looking into GTX 560 or maybe 570, I think it's worth to spend an extra 100 or whatever um, dollars or euro you you have to spend to get this GPU because you're gonna get that performance increase per dollar and obviously your case is gonna be quieter, cooler, so this affects all the components. So overall guys, I highly recommend this GPU. Now, I can't compare this against the 7950 from AMD unfortunately because I don't have one simply, but I think if you are AMD fan then Probably I would recommend to go with 7950 since the performance should be nearly the same and since you like the MD products and familiar with them, might as well go with MD. The only reason to go with this graphics card, at least for me, is because I need CUDA and, well, I like the physics effects uh, once in a while, but CUDA is the main thing because I'm using Adobe to produce these videos that you guys are watching. So without CUDA, basically, I'd be doing everything three, four, maybe five times slower than I am now. So yeah, I need CUDA, I need NVIDIA, I need QUIET, so GTX 660 at the moment is great. Plus, 
the at the moment of making this video at least we only have GTX 640 I think GTX 650 is not out yet never mind GTX 650 titanium version or TI whatever you call it um, so yeah there's a huge gap between the low end and the mid end I wouldn't really call this mid end guys because it's quite expensive graphics card and it performs nearly on the power of six, uh, with a 670 if it's overclocked properly so it's near to the high end graphics card really and price wise as well but yeah I think it's worth it maybe later in the future when the 650 version comes in we're going to be looking at the different scenario all together but maybe the price of this is going to go down so to sum everything up if you are an AMD user you might want to go with 7950 if you can get your hands on one if you want to try Nvidia go ahead I think you won't be disappointed the whole this new generation cards are great they all perform very well and they all are very good investment if you like Nvidia and if you have a budget for 660 T, sorry 560 Ti or 570 then definitely try to squeeze a little bit more cash and buy this product and you won't be disappointed so overall uh, 5 out of 5 stars I'd say for myself and I hope you guys liked the video if you did click the like button if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section down below thanks for watching have a nice day